Do you want to see inside it? Uh, this, is, this is what a van looks like after two weeks of desilting down a lake. <laughs> Look at that. It literally makes me want to cry. Quite glad it's frozen actually. I don't have a single rig tied. So give me give me a chance to tie three. Right. Where can I put this where I'm not gonna get it covered in dog shit? <laughs> What's up carp freaks and welcome to carp life. Before I start, I just wanna say a massive thank you for all the great comments and feedback from our first divey piece. The response has been quite overwhelming and it's great to know that you enjoyed watching the video. But today I am here at Butterley Reservoir in Derbyshire. Now I've never seen this lake before and even now I'm here, I still haven't really seen it because the fog is that thick, we've got about 60, 70 metres of visibility, that's it. Um, I don't know anything about the place, but I'm told it's really good for getting a bite when conditions are really tough. Um, <laughs> and they are tough today. Got here after two and a half hour drive and the lake is frozen. Um, just had a cast with the lead, I thought the lead would have gone straight through the ice, but just bounced along across the surface. So it looks like we're going to have a bit of a wait for it to thaw, but that will give me a chance to tell you what I've been up to in February. Well, February didn't get off to the best start for me as early on I fell ill with flu, um, proper flu as well, not man flu. So I was out of action for, for quite a few days, but eventually I managed to drag myself out of bed and head off down the local river with my friends Adam and Kaylee. Um, we just spent four hours down there sharing one rod, trotting a float down and we caught uh, just under 20 pound of chublets. So it was, it was a great day and it was nice after feeling so rough for, for all them days, it was nice just to get out in the fresh air and, and get a fishing fix. <clears throat> now you may re I'll do that again. Now you may remember I say that right? Now you may remember <laughs> Now you may <laughs> Why can't I say it? Now you Why can't I say it? Now you may remember last month most of my time was spent working down the lake clearing trees around the newly dug stock pond so that the otter fence could go up. Um, that had to be postponed due to some really wet weather that we'd had. Uh, and going into February, things still weren't any better. But there was still so much work to do down the lake, which couldn't be done until the, the stock pond was fenced, that I just couldn't delay things anymore. So we had to get the fencing guys in and uh, work had to start. It was, it was hard going because the ground was absolutely saturated. The tractor kept getting bogged down. It was slow work, but we got there in the end. Now, I say that the stock pond was fenced. There was actually one small section that we were unable to complete. Well, there's the fence, but I am not able to fence the entire perimeter at the moment. You can see the fence ends there around the stock pond. The main lake itself is totally fenced. 
um, but I'm unable to complete the fence around the stock pond at the moment. Reason being, when the main lake is drained, I'll be removing the silt and all the, the uh, slimy blanket weed, um, and that is going to be getting dumped around here. I've been clearing trees to make room for all the spoil. I've still got a few trees to go yet, so I can get in with the with the dumper trucks. Uh, there's a few more trees over here I need to clear. I've, I'm pretty much on top of it. But I need to clear these as well. Um, but this bank is probably about 50 meters that is unprotected and some might say oh well it's near the road it, it won't matter otters aren't going to come there that's absolute nonsense um, I know so many fisheries that have, have fenced like three quarters of the lake and, and left banks unprotected that are close to roads or close to railways or, or, or close to houses thinking that others won't get in they will it's no different to a, an urban fox an urban badger a squirrel or anything like that I mean how many times do you see um, you know, animals like that squashed on the road, uh, and an otter's no different. It's uh, it's no different at all. Um, so it needs to be protected. What I'm going to be doing is just running three or four strands of electric wire um, on this unprotected bit, um, starting quite low to the ground and then and then coming up in, in sort of stages. Um, so that that will be fine. That will protect this this bank that hasn't been fenced. Um, but at the moment, the main lake is being drained. The pumps are going and then next week that's when all the uh, the work starts again um, when I'll be removing the fish from the from the main lake holding them in the stock pond um, and then once they're they're held in here I can finish draining the lake completely and that's when the diggers and dumpers move in and we uh, get down to the real nitty-gritty in between all the work that was going on down the lake I had to meet up with Harry at the A1 pits to do a bit of filming for Fox. So this is us on location filming. Us under a bridge under the A1. The A1, yeah. <laughs> it's and not it... that great for sound actually. No? no. Look at these icicles of like lime scale up there. Film them, that's cool. Limesicles. Limesicles. Yeah. Would it be lime scale? Well they're actually called stalactites. Or... Right, it's stalactite, <laughs> I want. But I like limesicles. The, the ones that go up are a stalic mite. Correct. The ones that go down. down. But we're not in a cave. That happens in caves. I think it can still happen regardless. I think it's the same forces of nature at work. Cavemen. <laughs> so what we're doing under a bridge? Well, attempting to film a new intro for the challenge, but I don't think this is really... No? This, well, it's a bit loud. Echo, that gives it the effect I think we need. It's like, it's like sound effects without adding them on. It's like... I didn't, I wasn't going to. Uh, okay. So, how did that go? Well, apart from the multiple takes yeah. that we had to do. I'm, I'm always bad at learning my lines, aren't I? Come on. It's not really learning your lines, it's just saying them with any sort of decent emphasis on any of oh, it. Oh, sorry, I'm not a professional actor like yourself, Joe Charrington. <laughs> You've, you've treaded many awards over the years, haven't you? Uh, yeah. yeah. Many, treaded many awards, did you say, or boards? Boards. You went did to you... drama school, didn't you? And you did all, all that stuff? Yeah, sort of. Exactly. I'm not professionally trained like yourself. No. No. Sorry. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's gone okay. We've smashed through it. Yeah. Just about to go live on Facebook. Are we? Yeah, yeah, we are. Okay. Yeah. You, he knew that. He did that. That was acting. That was. Uh, uh, that was acting. Uh, he knew that we were going to go live. Well, um, I didn't. And I, pretended oh, you, that he didn't. I knew well, 10 seconds ago. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to do that. Obviously, you won't see it because this is a bit later than uh, Yes. Than you can actually see a, a mark on my face where that branch whacked me in the face. Where? Here. Yeah, but you've got marks all over your face. Yeah, well, I was, I was forced against my will to climb a tree for the sake of a video. Not just climb a it tree. Was, I mean, against I your will. In reality, you did want to do it. Uh, well, I was okay with climbing the tree, but you said just sit on that branch and let your legs dangle. <laughs> Who does that? Why would I just be sat there dangling Every, from a branch? Have you never... I've, you, you do that, though. When you're looking for fish, you get yourself in I'd a nice comfy position. I stand on a branch. Position. I wouldn't dangle from it. 
but uh, if there was a branch that you could have sat on, you'd have you'd have sat on on the comfy branch. Yes, but it was a proper wispy, flimsy tree, and I got uh, whacked in the eye with a with a branch. So it was nearly accident at work, wasn't it? Really, mm. and you'd have been responsible for that. Yeah, to be fair, uh, actually no, you're responsible for your own actions as a consultant. You're responsible for your own actions. You're not actually an employee. Of I am self-employed. That's yeah. that's correct. So yeah, it but... would it would be down to your own like public liability would it? insurance. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and you are a public liability. <laughs> right, let's do this live feed then. Yeah. Right, catch you later. So with the stock pond now protected, the real work could begin, and the next job was to drain down the main lake and transfer the fish over to the stock pond. So I got in touch with a, a pump hire company with a view of getting a, a six inch or eight inch pump. Uh, and the guy came out to, to assess the, the site. And he said that it wasn't really a viable option because these, these pumps weigh a couple of ton and they need a, a vehicle to be able to tow them in place. The problem with that is there isn't the, the vehicle access around the lake to get them where they needed to be. And uh, I certainly wasn't gonna push them there. Um, so instead, he did a few uh, maths and equations and everything, and he worked out that if we hired two two-inch pumps, the lake would be drained in 10 hours. Now, to say I was skeptical is, is an understatement. The lake is two and a half acres, uh, and having drained down just small ponds in the past, knowing how long they take, I thought there's no way it's gonna take 10 hours. So after running these pumps for a week, uh, which meant topping them up with fuel every two to two and a half hours. Um, I think the water had dropped about a foot. So I knew then this guy was talking total bollocks. So having run these two pumps, round the clock for the best part of a week. It was clear I was getting nowhere fast. So I managed to get the help of a couple of mates who sorted me out with, with two more pumps. So I now had four pumps, which needed topping up with fuel every two and a half hours. Uh, and it was knackering, absolutely knackering. I quickly learned how temperamental pumps can be. Uh, sometimes I don't want to start. Sometimes I don't want to pump water. So I just thought the best thing is just to keep them running with fuel. Once, once they're cut out, some of them just wouldn't start again. Um, I did consider sleeping down the lake because like I said, by the time I was getting home, I was more or less having to come straight back out again. Um, but just the noise of four pumps running, it was, it was deafening. You, you could hear it from about a mile away. So there's no way I was going to get any kip down there. Um, but yeah, with these four pumps running, I was starting to make a, a dent in things but still, with, with, with the time scale we had, I was still very concerned it wasn't going to be drained in time. Well, it's a new week, a new fortune. We've got Old Yeller back in action. Go on, Old Yeller. He hasn't been working for the past few days, and um, I just took it apart this morning, took the pipes apart, put them back together, and it worked first time. Obviously, there was a seal that wasn't quite tight enough. I, I wish I'd done that a couple of days ago, because the past few days, I've only had two pumps running down here. We've got five pumps at the lake and uh, only two have been functional. I've, I've given up on the other two, they're just not having it. So um, it's going to be tight, it's going to be tight. I need to get this water drained down by Friday, but the way it's looking, it's, uh, things are looking up. Well, it's 20 past nine. I've just come down to top up the pumps with fuel. And when I was doing so, I just noticed something flapping around in the, in the mud. I thought it was a frog at first. But it's this little tiny baby tench. It was just in the silt. There was no water there at all. He was just, like I said, I just saw some movement in the silt. It's amazing, really, because there hasn't been a tench caught in the lake for probably about five years. But there's obviously, well, there's at least two in here. One male, one female. <laughs> but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to rescue him. Put him in my garden pond at home, I think. Well, with just two days to go before the netting, I was still a little bit concerned there wasn't going to be enough water drained in time. Um, but luckily, one of my mates came to my help again and he sorted me out with a big badass mama pump. Well, I am just 
about to pull up to my lake now. I'm meeting a friend of mine, Darren Wilcox, who has managed to source a big badass pump. Um, I'm proper excited about this. In fact, you could say I'm pumped up. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a big fella. It's gonna take a few of us to get it in place, but I think this is just what we need. So let me introduce you to the latest addition to the pump family. This is Big Red. And Big Red has been an absolute bastard and doesn't want to start. There's Old Yeller next door, pumping away. He loves it now, Old Yeller. Can't get enough of it. Mr. White looking on. Mr. White hasn't let me down. Mr. White's never stopped pumping. Mrs. White's next door. Must have had an argument or something, I don't know. I think I'm going mad. I'd been spending that much time down at my lake with only the pumps as company. I was beginning to think of them as part of my family. Well, it's over five hours since I arrived at the lake and the ice has just cleared now, literally just this second. So I'm now able to get, get my rods in the water. Um, I've actually already put some bait in the swim. There was a little bit of ice there, but it was, it was only thin and I could get a spod through it. It was, it was too thick to be able to cast out and sink the line, but I got the spod through, no problem at all. And all I've done, I've just put out six spods of finely crumbed up live system boilies with some Amino Blend 365 liquid to really crank up the attraction levels and hopefully draw fish in from, from in the area and also any fish that may be sat within that water column. Um, I've just got three, um, three rods baited with bright hook baits. I've got two on um, yellow Northern Special pop-ups and uh, one on a, uh, a pink Northern Special pop-up. So that's it, let's get some uh, rods in the water. I don't believe that. I do not. <laughs> I was literally just sinking the line <laughs> after making that cast. I, I can't believe. I'm literally just sinking the line after that cast. I just felt the line tighten in my hand, picked up the rod, and we've actually got a fish on. Bear in mind, the ice has only just cleared a minute ago. Cast that, that lead has probably only been on the bottom five, ten seconds. That is crazy. <laughs> no way. I haven't even got me landing it in position or anything. I'll have to come over here. Uh. Mental. Do you know if I land this, this will be my first carp of 2018. Oh, will it? Yeah. I hope it's not a chub. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a calf, properly in the mouth and everything. <laughs> Look at that, that is crazy. Come on. Come on, fella. Yes! Look at that! 
Oh, he's a lovely scaly fish as well. I was not expecting that at all. Then when we got here, the lake was frozen. We waited five hours for the lake to defrost. Cast out, landed bang on the money where the, the spots had gone. Literally sinking line, felt it tighten in my hands, picked it up, and we've got a fish in the net. <laughs> well, that's got to be one of the quickest bites I've ever had. That rod had only been in the water seconds. I think them fish are just homed in straight away on that boily crumb I spotted out earlier. And uh, here I have what is my first carp of 2018. Happy days. That's the pose. That, do I look good? So this is the rig that I'm using on all three rods and as you can see, it's nothing complicated at all. I've got a hook link made from 25 pound Camatex Semi Stiff and that goes down to a size six wide gape beat point hook. I've got a BB quick change pop-up weight there and that critically balances the 12 mil pink Northern Special pop-up. Really simple, but it's worked so far. Well, it's lovely to be able to come down the lake first thing on the morning and hear the sound of birds tweeting rather than pumps roaring. Last night I decided to let the pumps run out of fuel. We are pretty much there now. That section of water behind me is only probably two feet deep. I can see the fish swimming around every now and then the backs are breaking the surface. We'll be netting the lake tomorrow, so it's just a case of coming down a couple of hours before and we'll get the rest of that water out, no problem at all. There's a couple of fish trapped in one small section of the lake behind me in the shallow bit. Most of them puddles there are literally inches deep, apart from that one corner over there. There's a couple of fish trapped in there, but again, they've got enough water over the backs not to, not to concern me. So yes, we got there in the end, eventually. <laughs> So the day of the netting finally came and this was something I was kind of nervous and excited about at the same time. Reason I say that is after the fish kill last year, there was quite a few fish that we hadn't found dead, um, but I also hadn't seen swimming around and I wasn't sure if they'd, they'd perished and died and got caught in the weed and then rotted away. So truth is I, I didn't really know what stock I had left. So today is the day that we remove the fish from the main lake and put them in the holding pond so that we can carry out all the, all the work necessary. At the moment I'm feeling, I'm excited. I'm also nervous, apprehensive. I don't, I don't really know what to expect, to be honest. Um, I don't think we found all the fish that died during the fish kill. Um, we never found the two biggest fish in the lake dead, but the, the, the blanket weed was so thick during the summer. Um, when we were removing it by hand, we were finding dead fish tangled deep down in, in the weed so you know that th those big fish could have died during the summer and then that blanket weed holds so much heat and I think it just it, it breaks them down very fast that you know th I, ha I haven't actually seen the two biggest fish in the lake for quite some time so I don't know at the moment I'm 50 50 as to whether they're actually even in here so I'm, I'm looking forward to to finding out one way or another um, and I've had loads of people message me saying, are you expecting any surprises? Um, I mean, this is the very first time I've done a drain down in the history of my lake. It's been here since 1994. That's when we dug it. I, 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 th I think I know every single resident in the lake. So I'm not expecting any, any great surprises, to be honest. Um, 
also because of the because of what happened during the summer you know I've probably lost uh, a summer's worth of growth so I'm not expecting the fish to be at fantastic weights I've not seen fish feeding over the winter period at all I've not seen any signs of feeding fish um, there's been no bait no food going in right through the summer and obviously the, you know there's a bacterial problem which you know that there will be everything they will be eating they'll be going into repairing themselves and healing themselves rather than putting into into growth so I'm not expecting any great weights um, but it's going to be nice to see exactly what stock I have left With the water drained right down, we were pretty much able to pick the fish out of the water by hand. And luckily, to put my mind at rest, spilled me brew, getting that excited. And luckily for me, to put my mind at rest, them first two fish we picked out were proper chunks. Well, I'm absolutely over the moon, because this is the fish, this is the biggest fish in the lake, a fish that I haven't seen since the fish kill, so I'm absolutely buzzing that it's still in here. Right, what does it weigh? <coughs> Down a bit in weight, it's 36 and a half pounds, but he's alive, he's fit and well. I'll soon put the weight back on, I'm sure. See if he is the biggest fish in the lake, alive and well, 36 and a half pounds. I can't make a hand. Well, here's another one of the lake's bigger fish, a fish known as a peach because of the, the rosy, pinky sort of complexion around the front end. 30 pounds, 10 ounces. Beautiful fish, one of my favourite fish in the lake, this one. This is the fish that got attacked by otters last spring. They found the way in the lake through the inflow pipe where the guard had, had come slightly loose and the, they moved the guard out the way and came up the pipe. Um, originally all this top half of the tail, or this section of the tail was missing. You can see we've got fresh growth there so it won't be long before its, it's tail's full again. Let's hold him up and have a proper look at him. It's a proper chunk, has been 36 pound plus this fish. Now as well as those two big mirrors, we also got the original fish in the netting as well. Now there's actually only four originals left in the lake and all of those are still there. These are fish which are very rarely caught. It's not unusual for them to go five, six, seven years without capture or even longer. Um, so it was really nice to see them again in the flesh. We've got another one of the original fish. Have a look at that one, proper angry male. Funny enough, this one's called Nelson. You can see why. Again, stocked in 1994, at around 10 pound in weight. It was an old fish when we stocked him, so you know, this fish is, is almost certainly 35 years old. It's another one of the original commons that was stocked in the mid 90s. You can see it looks old and almost leany like, I guess, in a way. Yeah, 22 pound two ounces this one. Here we are, this is the last fish out of the netting. One awesome looking fish it is too. I had thought there was 40 carp left in the lake after the fish kill. And this is number 41. We did get a long, skinny, chub-like common which I had no photo record of, which, which kind of fooled me slightly. But every fish I thought was alive is now accounted for and in the stock pond, so happy days. Well, all the fish are now in their temporary home in the holding pond. And they'll be in here for about a month while we carry out all the work on the lake and uh, while it fills back up with water. Then we'll have to get this, this pond netted and then we'll transfer the fish back. My dad's just over there. He's um, 
he's putting up the electric fence. This was a section that we couldn't uh, fence um, before. That's because the silt that's going to be coming out of the lake, I'm going to be leading it around here and I'm going to be spreading that around where the fence will eventually be. So that's why we couldn't, we couldn't fence this section. Instead we've just got this temporary electric fence. Actually we'll have a look at that. Yeah so all we've got, it's not turned on yet, all we've got is five strands of wire. Um, so obviously you can't, an otter can't get under there and if it was to attempt to climb over and it puts its paws on there then obviously it's going to get quite a shock. So that's all that's needed really to protect this this short section of bank which is unfenced. Well that's it, all the fish have been moved over safely. I've got my dad cracking on with the electric fence. Um, I still got the pumps running in the main lake to get the last bit of water out ready for when uh, work starts on Monday. But right now I've got to head over to Manchester for the Northern Angling Show. So I need to get home, get showered and get on the road because I need to be there in about two and a half hours. <laughs> That's actually my memorial kettle that. I've had the, well, some of the big fish that died in the fish kill at my lake, have had them engraved on the kettle. Yeah, it is nice. Sound a bit more enthusiastic about it, like, you know. <laughs> the Northern Angling Show was an absolute blast. It's always good to catch up with other fox anglers. We live all over the country, so we don't really see each other a great deal. So it's nice to, to meet up on the nights we go out for a meal, have a few drinks. It's just, it's just great fun. Uh, and the show itself is probably my favourite show. It's, it's mega busy and it's great to see so many enthusiastic and passionate carp anglers. I'm a chicken shashlik. <laughs> chicken shashlik, please? Yes, yes. it's not yeah. here. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Um, even Harry was absolutely swamped with people wanting selfies. So having got back from the northern show, it was back working down my lake and all those weeks and months of hard work and sleepless nights had been for this. So here we go, this is the first load of silt about to come out. I can see me getting proper splattered here. This is looking messy. So work had only just started and things already weren't going to plan. I've only just got started, already having a nightmare. The area where I was wanting to dump all the all the silt where I've spent time clearing trees to make it make a nice space to dump it all, that's too wet to drive the dumper truck on. I've done one journey and sunk straight down to the axle. Uh, so I can't travel on it at all. 
So what I'm going to have to do is uh, cut through the otter fence um, in an area where the trees are quite sparse. There's, there's quite a good area there where I can get lots of lots of silt dumped. Um, this bit of the fence isn't really sort of functional actually because the the new fence around the stock pond kind of makes this bit redundant so it's not going to be a drama I'll just cut a gap in here patch it all up when we're done and uh, yes we can get all the silt dumped in here and the water pump stayed true to form by being reliably unreliable so it's had a bit of an accident with one of the pumps down here couldn't get it to pump water took the cap off on the top I got it going. Oh yeah. Whew. As well as the pumps, it also seemed that the weather was against me. So it's day two of the desilting and the weather has taken a real turn for the worse. This isn't going to be easy work. Trying to drive the, the dumper on wet, sloppy mud and snow is just going to slow me down massively. It's absolutely Baltic as well. It's that cold. It's the first time in my life I have wore a hat with ear flaps, but uh, I can't put this off any longer. Let's get cracking. Well, I can't believe I had that bite within about five seconds of casting out and I've had nothing since. Been fishing about four hours now and all I've had to show since then is three bream. But um, it's about an hour before it gets dark, so I'm still sort of quite confident I might get one more chance uh, before it's time to hit the road. So, I think it's fair to say that February has been a very pumpy sort of month. And when I lay down in bed on a night, I can still hear the deafening sound of all those pumps roaring. But also, I think it's been quite a kind month to me. I've caught my first carp of the year, as you saw earlier. Um, and the work at the lake, despite all the earlier hiccups, the netting and the drain down went much better than I could have expected. But as we move into March, things look set to be even more hectic. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done down at my lake. My tutorials kick off and also we're filming another episode of the challenge. So join me next month to see how I get on. Well, last month I finished with a chub. This month I'm going to finish on a bream. Hopefully next month we can finish on a carp. <laughs>